Okay, so uh, welcome. Uh, we can call it part two of my uh, uh, analysis of my day trading. Uh, I'm going to show you this one because uh, this is the Friday, uh, the uh, 29th of September, uh, and part one was the Thursday. Uh, but just to recap on the Thursday, if you can remember, uh, when I was trading, I thought this was like a head and shoulders. I had shorted it here, uh, made money. I felt that was a very bearish sign and it was going to go a lot further. And so I, if you remember, I just took a break on my couch to sort of uh, do my uh, sort of, uh, you know, sort of, uh, sort of accept the risk third part of my little trading plan. And I got stopped out, as you remember, and then it went up. Now, and then this this here looked like a, a good bearish sign, but I ignored it. Now I'm going to go into the reasons why I ignored it because I'm going to. This is yesterday, mind you. Oh, let me just put it onto the hourly. You get a clearer view. Right, right. So on the hourly, what happened was, and I was, and what really made me bullish was this sign here. Yeah. So this is when I was shorting it. This is when it went against me on the 15 minute chart. And seeing that, you know, you've got two sort of like hammers there, made me very confident that the market was going to go up. That's why when this sign here, that was that bearish sort of signal on the 15 minute chart came up, I ignored it, okay? And for good reason, okay? Because this, broke that completely yeah and there I knew now at this level here we've got here uh, 15 293 it was around here really I was well in uh, 15 275 so my target at that time and that was just recuperating recuperating the money which I'd lost was uh, 300 yeah 15 300 now at this point having seen uh, these not only these two, but this here made me very, very bullish. Now the ironic was, I spent the beginning of the day preparing myself to be bearish based on this uh, this trend, but that trend seemed to have got broken. Okay, and this made me uber bullish. Uh, but my target was three hundred, and unfortunately, once I hit the three hundred. That is where I recoup the money which I'd lost, which was 700, plus I was minus 200. Uh, I managed to make all that money back, plus an extra uh, 150 more, okay? Now, having made all that money back, I decided to call it a day, yeah? And this is what happened next. Whoa, yeah, we can see. It went up to 360. So that was 60 points on the table. Now, obviously, it's not all the time you're going to get 360, is it? Yeah? So I think it would be fair to say, if we've had been a bit more patient, or we've got an extra 23 ticks. And at that point in time, I was trading at uh, 15 pounds a point. Yeah? So that I left on the table, you could say, an additional 345 pounds. Okay, now uh, that was uh, part one. Now I want to go into part two. Okay, so the next day when I came into the market, I came into the market, market open three, well off, well on the way, about here, eight, eight o'clock. Yeah. So, this is what's gone on yesterday, or the, you know, the day before this thing. Part two here now, I've seen the market is rising. Can you imagine if I had stayed in my position, in a swing trading position, how much that would have been worth? So we've got, uh, what was it, 219, and it's gone up to 464, 464 minus 219. So that's 240, uh, five points 
times uh, the 15 ticks would have been over three thousand five hundred pounds uh in, in in my skyrocket yep in my pocket um but uh, i i do day trade and i try to avoid keeping overnight positions i'm not adverse to it but i try to avoid it i was just thankful that i actually got my money back and some so part two uh friday i came in and my target this time was for the uh uh 464 level okay uh which was hit so now i scaled it scaled it up and put my um stop so my stop was around here my stop was uh 334 okay excuse me yes it's a, a spanish spanish beer most of the time when I was in Spain. Okay. Now, look, my stop was here. You say it's quite a deep stop, 34. I was in at around, uh, say, 30, uh, it was about 70, 75. Yeah. Um, it was a deep stop. Anyway, at this point, when it exceeded that, I carried on coming in. Now, I scaled, it, I scaled my trading. When you're trading, it's bit, you've got those three elements of a trade, haven't you? You've got your entry. You decide when you're going to get into the trade. Uh, and you also decide what size you're going to go into the trade. And then you've got the management of the trade. And that is, you know, where are you going to put your stop? Are you going to move your stop? Are you going to put a limit order on? Are you going to move that limit order on? Are you going to add to your position? Or are you going to take away from your position? Are you going to have a rolling stop? You know, you're managing the trade. It's a bit like uh, a bicycle with a uh, uh, number of gears. You alter the gears depending on how you're seeing the market play out, okay? Uh, well, that's what I do, I'm managing the trade, okay? Uh, as I'm in the trade, and then you have the exit as to when you're gonna get out, okay? Now, um, what happened was that there was data coming out about inflation. Inflation data, uh, it was around um, 10 o'clock, no, nine o'clock for German, uh, eleven o'clock. Sorry, uh, yeah, I think it's eleven o'clock for European, and then uh, the Michigan uh, uh, settlement and Michigan survey came out uh, in America at three o'clock. Now, before it got to the Michigan survey, as you can see here, right here, this is what's been driving this market here was the positive effects of the European uh, inflationary zone. It was showing that inflation was actually going down. And so the market was a bit more calmer and more bullish. Great stuff, great stuff. And so it's driving the market. This, that's why it's important to, to take in consideration the economic announcements on the day. It gives you guidance as to why the market is performing the way it, 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 it is. Now, I was expecting it to go here. But what I noticed was it started hovering and it hovered there. And it was at this point here, that's two o'clock. Yeah, that was the two o'clock bar and it was hovering. And I'm like, okay, is it gonna now rump it home and go to, you know, 34? I had my limit order along there, maybe just above. I was expecting it to continue to at least pierce there, but it was hesitant there. And I, at this point, I was in at about £20 a point. Uh, I came out, I was jobbing, a bit indecisive. And when I'm in jobbing, not to change my direction, but jobbing as to whether I should just take a pause and take my profits or get a, bit, a little bit more. Um, in the end, and you, you can see, I'll show you a bit, a bit later. So when the data came out, I made sure I wasn't in the market. And then the data came out data itself wasn't overly dramatic but it was slightly bearish and that, it was at that point that I shorted it yeah I shorted my position and I can tell you something now because on a Friday yeah you've got to understand on a Friday especially nowadays when people are working from home and stuff like that yeah uh, any bearish sentiment is going to be a bit exaggerated in my opinion okay uh, and it sure was. It was driving all the way down. And I was so pleased. I was so pleased. Look at that. That was my level here. 
I was, I was thinking it's going to come down to there, but rather, you know, always leave a little for the other guy. Always leave a little for the other guy. I.e., don't get too greedy when you're trading. Okay, uh, so I, I sort of came out. Uh, I'd already taken money out of my actual account at that point, and then it, it just ended. Yeah, the market ended here. Um, uh, for uh, 350 yeah literally where it began where it began so what what does that look like um let me just uh show you what it looked like for my days trading okay so that was my equity curve yeah uh as you can see it was pretty trouble free it was pretty trouble free okay this is where i started jobbing a bit yeah, uh, when it was hesitating, well, I thought it was going to go a lot higher, uh, but then I started taking more money out. So I was dropping around here, then I started taking more money out when I shorted it, and it came back to the level and up some. Okay, so um, on completion. Fuck me. So we've got, an, an, it's, it's crazy really, uh, and that is, you know, you're not going to get a, a win ratio like that often, in all honesty. Uh, that is not usually mine. My win ratio is usually about 42%, okay? So you can tell it was a crazy day uh, yesterday at 94%, yeah? I've done 17 trades, 16 were profitable, one was a losing trade no scratches yeah that is a crazy 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 day yeah you don't get days like that all the time trust me and uh in all honesty i was up all the time at, at one point i was taking very large risks in terms of i was you know when, so when it was like 1000 say uh, 200 i was prepared to trade half of that pnl to get more to push it more i.e. I would do a trade and if I lost uh, 600 and I walked away with 700 profit for the day that, that's that fine yeah and I was prepared to do that okay uh, more to see where I figured the market was going to go uh, but uh, yeah uh, I'm going to show you uh, some of the uh, pardon me I'm going to show you the order book not one week, I'll do it two days. Do two days, all, all the books. And you, it's just to give, this is the DAX, remember, I'm trading. Uh, that was, these are my last trades here. Yeah. That one there, unnecessary. But, you know, quite a lot of green there. Quite a lot of green. Okay. Um, I mean, essentially, I was just going in, taking some, going in, taking some. Uh, I'm with a, an IG account, so uh, some of these trades I was doing, uh, because you, the minimum you can take out is £100, and I wanted to round it up. So I was just doing the trading to get a £100 to then uh, come out so I could take it out of my actual account. Uh, but, uh, yeah, that's... That's all, really. That's all I have to say uh, in that regards. Um, I, I, yeah, it was, it was a good day for me. Uh, it's been good two days. They're never like that before. Uh, the, the one thing I'd like to talk about is a revenge trading. Um, so, obviously, it doesn't always go to plan when you're trading. And oftentimes, uh, you'll, you'll do trades and you're doing losing trades. And you get in a flummox. And then you do what most traders do. You know you're not supposed to do it okay and that is revenge trading now the problem with revenge trading is obviously it's part of it is your ego yeah you don't like the idea that you're wrong okay that's one problem uh the second problem is that you might be trading revenge trading the same size as you were losing so now you're gonna those losses are gonna accumulate a lot quicker okay what you have to do when you're in a revenge trade my favorite song for revenge trade is the Michael Jackson or the Jackson 5 song, I Want You Back. 
Yeah, I want all my money back. All the money I've lost, I want it back. Yeah, um, <laughs> but uh, reality, you know, realistically speaking, uh, I think the way to step out of the revenge trade is to take a step back. That's the first thing. That's what Steve Ward would tell us uh, when I was in the trading uh, 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 prop trading company. You know, uh, uh, change your state. Get up, come out, have a cup of tea, walk around the block, maybe. Okay, it's that aha situation, yeah. Awareness, yeah. Halt what you're doing and assess the situation. So that's one thing you can do. Aha. Uh-huh. Second thing, what you can do and you should do, is to trade smaller size. Now, the reason why you're trading for smaller sizes is because you're trying to test the market. If you're in a battle, if you're a general and uh, the, you're being overwhelmed by the enemy, but then at the same time, we don't really know where the enemy's coming from. We don't really know where the enemy's main strengths are. It doesn't make sense to uh, deploy all your forces, uh, all your size, all your account to an area where you don't really know where the enemy is. It makes better sense to send reconnaissance out to get an idea and a feel for where the enemy is. Likewise, it makes better sense to reduce your size in which you're trading so you can get a bit, that way you're not going to be losing much on your account, but you are going to get a bit of a feel for the market should you decide to continue trading, okay? It's not about getting your money back straight away. It's about getting in sync with the market again, okay? Now, that's it really. Was just, these are just my ideas. I hope that uh, they have, have helped to you. Uh, and uh, that's it. Um, to, to the next video uh, might be a completely different subject but who knows okay well thank you um, and uh, good evening good night hope you like my beard because I'm going to be shaving off soon <laughs>